Hey everybody, what's it, Fox Gaming here. So this is an exotic review video for you today. I've incorporated the Imperial Dynasty holster um, in my my traditional PvP build. It actually fits quite nicely because my main build is a hazard protected build, um, just because hazard is kind of meta at the moment. So it actually kind of fit in surprisingly well into this build. So just before we get started with the build and the gameplay, the conflict gameplay, um, just want to you know let you all know that it is of course the launch of tu 10.1 today that came out about three or four hours ago i'm not going to be going through the patch notes in the video uh, there's plenty of content creators that have already done that but i will link the description in the description the patch notes from the official uh, ubisoft website so you can read through those at your own leisure um i will say just to summarize that it's a good patch and they've made some nice buffs to hives in general we can now change our gear correctly um ars have received a nice buff so there's you know some some good buffs and nerfs now that I really think are going to balance the game out quite nicely. Armor regen seems to have taken a back seat. Shield health is kind of coming forward, so I'm interested to see how this shapes up the meta. Anyway, so you probably recognise this build from my previous videos. This is my hazard protected build. I run two Seska uh, and one Yarl to get the hazard protection. With this build to make sure that I got the two blues minimum, I did have to run a second Yarl, but that's fine because that gives me weapon damage. Um, and then I've got the um, you know, the standard, uh, wait, what on earth? That's not right at all. Okay, there we go. That's what I meant to have on there. So tell a lie. I had to swap out my second blue. I don't know why I had the second yell there. That doesn't, doesn't make any sense. I think that was supposed to be an intimidate yell that I meant to swap off, but, uh, I don't appear to have that anywhere. So, oh, there it is. Now that's missing too much. Um, too much hazard protection. So, so yeah, it's my standard hazard build. So all of these pieces are the same apart from here. <clears throat> what you would normally see down here is I think a Grupo, if I remember correctly, that's rolled to blue. So traditionally I have two blues on this build. Um, the reason that I've added a shield in is because shields bone, um, get buffed off of both yellow and blue attributes. And I've got the yellow from the Imperial and the blue from the, the knees. So I'm hoping that's going to help me out a bit. But I've, I've, what I really wanted to do with this build was to get the two blue, three red, and then of course the one yellow from the Imperial whilst retaining Intimidate and Adrenaline Rush. So I've not really changed anything at all other than swapping this in, but because it automatically comes with 10% hazard protection max, I thought it could be good. So this got reworked in TU9, I think it was, or 9.1 or something. Um, it's, it's kind of the same in PvE, while in combat applies burn to the enemy closest to you within 20 meters, cooldown 35 seconds. But if you change that to PvP, it's a bit different. While in combat and after maintaining line of sight for three seconds, applies burn to the closest enemy. So, yeah, what it now does is it puts a little red line between you and the person that it's targeting. And if you break line of sight, or if they manage to break it, because they can see that line as well, um, then it resets and it doesn't go off. Uh, you don't use a cooldown or anything, it has to physically prop for it to go off. But I wanted to see if it's still going to be useful to use in PvP. Because ultimately, setting somebody on fire in a 1v1 prevents them from aiming down sights whilst you yourself can continue to do so. Now, we are in a hazard meta, which means a lot of people are specced against hazard, you know, to protect themselves from it. And with a recent buff to the booster hive, now giving you 20% hazard protection just from bare minimum, and going all the way up to 90% from skill tier 6 with 3 times stim efficiency mods at max, yes, it is possible to hit 90%. You know, we are definitely um, maybe coming to the end of the hazard meta because so many people can easily spec into hazard protection now that this might not be viable. But I'm testing this literally within the first couple of hours of TU 10.1. I just want to see if it can work and what it does. So I'm still using Lady Death. Everything else is the same from my previous build. I've gone with Firewall here as a change up from Demolitionist because I wanted to get the Firewall shield for the extra damage. Um, and I wanted the extra 20% burn duration from Firewall to hopefully stack quite nicely with the Imperial Dynasty. I have taken a bit of a hit on my critical hit damage. It's gone down from about 120 or something, 115 maybe, to 91, 92. But I'm still at the critical hit chance cap thereabouts. Um, if we go over to my hazard. So I was at 100 for burn and 80 something, 87 for everything else. I'm currently at, if you have a quick look here, 90% for everything apart from burn, which is 99.4. So I'm going to be immune to, um, you know, all the stuff I was immune to before. Fire's going to affect me for 0.06% or 0.6%, sorry. I don't even know what that's going to look like, to be fair. It must be the world's quickest burn. It'll probably be funny to see. 
But that again, just to reiterate, I'll, I'll link this the main version of this build in the description. Um, but to reiterate, that's always achieved by having hazard protection rolled onto every single piece, as you can see I've done here. Two Seska and one Yarl. If you do that, the two Seska, one Yarl, and 10% roll onto every piece, you will hit 90%. The only way to hit 100% without the use of mods or a um, booster hive is to run three 511 as your other three pieces. I refuse to do that because I don't care for incoming repairs or health. I'm just running the the Sokolov, the Walker and Harris Matador backpack because it's the named version of you know the perfect adrenaline rush and usually a Grupo for the extra critical hit damage which in this case I have swapped out of course to the Imperial holster. Let's see if any of these boys are running hazard protection. No he is not. No he is not. Only a little bit anyway. Oh this guy is. Okay what's he at? Oh can we get there in time? Oh not very much only 40% and the bottom guy no, I can check the last guy. Okay. The problem is you can't really control who it burns. I mean, you can a lot more now since it's rework. Um, for those of you that don't know, when the Imperial Dynasty Fire Holster, the burn holster, came out in TU8, it used to burn anybody within that 20 meter radius. Anybody at all. They could be through a wall, they could be anywhere. It was ridiculous. And if you spec high into status effects, it could actually be quite frustrating. Um, that still works that way in PvE, but now you've got to maintain the line of sight in PvP, which is obviously a lot better. Um, I might test this out in PvE and see if it, it factors into a Creeping Death Eclipse build. Maybe I'll have, I don't know, I'm thinking four-piece Eclipse with the chest for the 20 meter range, the Imperial Dynasty holster and probably a Golan um, Creeping Death backpack just for the extra status effects and then just see if I can really spread fire around the room like crazy. I'll probably still stick with the, the Airburst Seeker Mine and Riot Foam. Actually, Riot Foam in place, the Airburst has massive duration. Um, and obviously they can't dodge it when they're foamed and then it just spreads around the room. So yeah, maybe it'll still fit into that. I'm also going to be um, streaming a legendary run, maybe even tonight actually, um, just because they've buffed the, the quality of the loot as part of TU 10.1. Oh, these guys have gone right, haven't they? Yeah, so I'm going to... Um... Oh, interesting, interesting. Oxidizer, not often we see that. Why is it like a chem coming out? Oh, you just you just killed yourself, buddy. <laughs> that oxidizer was actually putting in some work. But the good thing about having one yellow on my build... clean up. The good thing about having one yellow on my build is I get slightly faster cooldown for my chem launcher. I can now go up to three in the mag, if you could call it that. Three chem bullets. Three big foamy boys. And my shield is stronger. Um, all while still retaining that three weapon. Oh, they're going to push you. Where are they going to push you? I've got you back. I've got you back. That guy is. Weird little feature of the shield, if you pull out your shield with low ammo in your weapon, I think it's got to be less than 10%, it automatically pulls out your other weapon. But if you catch your reload at 32 bullets and pull it out just then, it doesn't recognise it very well. <coughs> oh, let's bait this guy and as soon as he comes down here he's getting a big dirty foam. I've not really seen the um, the, chem uh, the Imperial kick in yet. It did, it did against that guy but I didn't see the red line. Let's try and keep an eye out for that red line if we can. How was that? There is, there's the line. Oh, he's on fire now. Oh no, he's not on fire. Wait, I set my teammate on fire? That's not how the game works. Thank you. Boost online. I'm gonna push that boost, it'll hopefully take me out of combat as well. Assault turret detected. Looks like my buddy boy's on it. I could heal up here, but I don't like to waste the armor kits where possible. We've lost the player for some reason. That kind of sucks. So places with me, bro. I am fire immune. Da, 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 da. Ooh, unlucky dude. The boost is being taken by allies. Oh, I'll pick the right side of that to go to. Give me ammo. Armor, oh, yes. No, don't die. We has come back. Uh, maybe Agent I could save now. you, brother. I can't. 
No. Get back into cover. Get back into cover. Please don't push. Please don't push. Oh, we got it. Yes. There's the fire. Sure, they gave me the extra damage as well. I've got the speed boost. I'm going to run into this guy. Mr. Kerm, because I'm sucky. No, I didn't. I didn't miss it. Whoa, what was that? Damn, that was some big damage. Should have focused him first. He must have had a glass cannon rifle build on. He must have done. So, I don't know, man. I mean, the fact that it kicks in three seconds after you got the line of sight and in combat means it's going to happen potentially later than it needs to be. So, I I don't think this is viable, if I'm being honest. I like having the... Um, the option to set Rogue people on fire and longer drone. fights. I feel against high armoured teams. Why has my adrenaline rush just gone off there? Wait, what? Why is this going off? Ah! I've set this guy on fire? How? I wasn't even looking at him. Yay, immune. <laughs> I have a funny feeling I might have just been dealt with. Can I kill him? Where's he gone? He just disappeared. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. What's happening? The game is crashing. I'm glad I've caught this on stream, actually. I'm just going to run around for the remaining four seconds and see if we get dealt with. I think you can phone these. That was so weird. <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. So, did I notice the Imperial Holster... Activating, yes. Does it kick in a bit too late? Uh, I'm going to say yes. I think what you want to do is exactly what I've done. Um, I encourage everybody to put together my SMG hazard immune build because it is a necessity with this current meta. Maybe less so with the booster hype buff, but it's really important. Um, so what you want to do is put together the build as I put it together with the holster as a swappable item because I can just swap out the Imperial holster for a... Um, for a Grupo one with armour on it. So what you want to do is wait until um, you come up against a team that's full of high armour people, essentially where the battles will last longer. And I feel in that scenario it's actually going to be quite strong because you've got Firewall on for the 20% burn duration, you've got 10% status effects on Imperial, and it, all, all you've got to do is be shooting into the enemy and it's just going to catch them on fire mid-fight, um, which is the time that they might be considering making their push or, or running off to heal or something. And you're just going to guarantee that you'll close the kill. Um, if you're up against a bunch of lower armour people, which is more often than not the case in conflict, I don't think it's very good. High armour battles, yes, I think it could be really good, but just do what I've done. Just have it, you know, have a good holster you can swap out with this build. Um, let me just go back to the build so you can screenshot it if needed. Yeah, have a good holster that you can swap out, and then that way you can just literally, you know, when you um, inspect your teammates... Or you're in the dark zone and you can see who you're up against after a bit of playing around. You could maybe swap onto it. Um, you know, if you've got a survivalist eclipse user in your team, that's just one more way to get extra damage anyway. But this is essentially four red and two blue. Obviously with the hit holster it's not. And then I'll just swap onto this. No, that's not true at all. Where is... Uh, I've got a Grupo with um, Hazard on. Yeah, so that's what you want to do. You want to have your holster as a swappable item there, so you can just instantly go, like in the middle of a game, you can just quickly go to it, slap it on. I don't know why I've got that wrong. Or just save it as two different loadouts. Do it how you want, but yeah, I'd definitely try this out against high armour targets. I think that could work really well in that scenario. Um, but that three seconds is too long against somebody that runs a similar build to me, which is traditionally two blue and four red. Uh, I just don't think it's good enough there, unless you're going to play in the back lines. So that's the end of the video. Um, please do read through the patch notes that I've linked in the description. Thank you again for the continued support of the channel. I hope you all enjoyed that little lag out potential delta that I had mid-game there. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.